Here we're going to look at a nice problem involving the roots of a quartic polynomial. And this comes from an exam slash contest that Stanford used to give out. And this is from the 1947 edition. So we want to find all real numbers m such that x to the fourth minus 3m plus 2x squared plus m squared equals zero has four real roots. And those real roots are in arithmetic progression. So let's recall that they are in arithmetic progression if they can be written from smallest to largest as a, a plus k, a plus 2k, a plus 3k. And so here the difference involved in this arithmetic progression would be this number k. Okay, so our strategy will be to factor this to somehow find its roots in terms of m and then put those roots in order and then fiddle with m until we have the distance between each root the same. So let's maybe see how we can do this. So I'd say that there are two main starting approaches. The first approach would to just take our original equation and notice that it's a quadratic equation in x squared and we could immediately apply the quadratic formula and we'll get an equation involving x squared and a bunch of radicals on the other side. But I think that's a little bit too much work. I think maybe we should use some sort of trick factoring to simplify this quartic polynomial to a product of two quadratic polynomials. So to be more clear, I think we should take x to the fourth minus 3m plus 2x squared plus m squared and factor it as two quadratic polynomials. So we know the leading term must be x squared. Well, we don't know that it must be x squared. They could be like reciprocals of each other, but we might as well take it to be x squared. And then, well, since this problem comes from a math contest, it probably works out nicely. And that's actually a pretty good hint for all contest problems, which means we can probably take the constant term for each of these quadratic polynomials to be m. So we have m times m equals m squared. Then all we have to figure out are the linear terms. So I'm gonna write them like this. So we have plus a times x plus b times x. Now you may or may not know immediately that a and b must be like negatives of each other just by how this multiplies out. But I think you can get to this guess without knowing that and then you can check that as you work forward. Okay, so now we're gonna distribute out this right hand side of the equation. So we'll have x to the fourth plus, so our x cubed term will be a plus b and then our x squared term, well, let's look at that. That'll be a, b, and then plus 2m. And then let's see what our linear term is. So our linear term will be m times a plus b. And then finally, our constant term is m squared, exactly like we need it to be. So next, we'll compare coefficients on the left hand and the right hand side of this equation. So notice there are no x cubed terms on the left hand side, which tells us that a plus b must be 0, because a plus b is our x cubed term on the right hand side. On the left hand side, our x squared term is minus 3m plus 2. So let's underline that in purple. And this is our x squared term on the right hand side. So that gives us another equation. A times B plus 2M equals minus 3M minus 2. So I'll distribute that minus sign through. And then again, there are no linear terms on the left hand side of the equation. And then the linear term on the right hand side of the equation is M times A plus B. So we also know that M times A plus B equals zero zero. So this is the system of equations we need to solve. So I'll just immediately say that if we have m equals zero, notice that two roots of our quartic polynomial are equal to zero, but you can't have arithmetic progression where two of the values are equal, but not all of the values are equal. So m equals zero is not an interesting case, which means this equation does not really add anything. So that means we have these two equations. So we can easily reduce this. Here we have um, b equals negative a 
plugging that into our lower equation gives us minus a squared equals minus 5m minus 2. In other words, a equals the square root of 5m plus 2, which means b equals negative the square root of 5m plus 2. So let's maybe take these values of a and b that we have determined and plug them into this factorization at the top. On the last board, we did this clever factorization of our equation. So we took x to the fourth minus 3m plus 2x squared plus m squared, and we factored it as x squared plus square root of 5m plus 2x plus m, and x squared minus the square root of 5m plus 2 times x plus m. And since we've got two quadratic factors there, we can apply the quadratic formula to each of those. And maybe I'll skip all of the details of the quadratic formula, but that will give us four different solutions, two for this setup and two for this setup. So using the quadratic formula, we'll have negative b, plus or minus, all that stuff. But notice that this b value and this b value are opposites of each other, which means we'll really have plus or minus that. So this is square root of 5m plus 2, and then another plus or, plus or minus. And here we have our b squared minus 4ac term. But notice our b squared minus 4ac term will be 5m plus 2 minus 4m. So that's just m plus 2. So we have all of this over two. So those are our four roots. So we need to break this into cases at this point because we'd like to order these from least to greatest, but the way they are ordered from least to greatest depends on the value of M. So let's maybe break this into case one. And this is when M is bigger than or equal to zero. And this first case will maybe be the most obvious ordering of these roots. So it's super easy to write down the smallest and the largest root. The smallest root will be attached to two minus signs, and the largest root will be attached to two positive signs. So here we have minus root 5m plus 2 minus a root m plus 2 over 2. So that's our smallest root of this equation. And then our largest one, which I'll put over here, will be square root of 5m plus 2 plus square root of m plus 2 all over 2, like that. Now next, we can order the middle roots, and that's going to depend on the value of m. So if m is bigger than or equal to 0, then the next largest will be gained by changing this minus sign to a plus sign. So we'll have minus root 5m plus 2 plus root m plus 2 over 2. And then the third largest will be gained from, well, we only have one left over, so we can just write that in. So here we'll have root 5m plus 2 minus root m plus 2 all over 2. So if we want to think about this in the language of our setup over here, this would be our smallest value. This would be our a plus k. This would be our a plus 2k. And this would be our a plus 3k in our arithmetic progression. So what we really want to do is find the distance between all of these roots. So let's calculate that down here in peach color. So let's take this second root minus this first root. And let's see what we get when we do that. So the minus root 5m plus 2 will cancel, and these two will build up, giving us a distance of root m plus 2. Now let's look over here and notice that essentially the same thing happens. So here we have a distance of root m plus 2. So those already have the same distance between them, so we just have to make sure those middle two roots are the same distance from each other. So let's look at this distance. And you can see that the root 5m plus 2 builds up here. And we're going to have root 5m plus 2 minus root m plus 2. So that's what you get after performing that subtraction. And so what we want is for all of these values, which I'm underlining in purple, to be equal. So obviously the first and the last are equal, so we just have to ensure that maybe the first and the second are equal. So in other words, we have the equation root m plus 2 is equal to square root of 5m plus 2 minus the square root of m plus 2. So that's pretty easy to solve. That gives us 2 times the square root of m plus 2 
equals the square root of 5m plus 2. Next, we can square both sides of that equation. When we square this side, we'll have 4 times the quantity m plus 2. That'll give us 4m plus 8. And if we square this side, we'll have 5m plus 2. Now, moving things around, we see that we get m equals 6. So that means that m equals 6 will give us four real roots in arithmetic progression. So I'll let you guys plug that into our value for the roots up here to ensure that they are in arithmetic progression, but that's not too hard to do. Okay, so now let's look at case two. So our second case is when m is less than zero. And here we have the same smallest root and largest root, but the middle roots have exchanged places. And again, that follows pretty easily because m is less than zero in this case. So now we need to calculate the distance between subsequent roots and then ensure that those distances are the same. So if we do the second root minus the first root, let's see what we get there. So here we will have the square root of 5m plus 2. So that's pretty easy to see. We have this root 5m plus 2 builds up, so it cancels the denominator, and then these two guys cancel with each other. Then let's see, if we subtract this from this, we will have minus root 5m plus 2 plus root m plus 2 for essentially the same kind of reason. And then over there on that other side, we'll have root 5m plus 2. So now as we see, just like before, the distance between the first and the second root and the distance between the third and the fourth root are always the same. So we just must ensure that the distance between this first and second and second third are also the same. In other words, we've got this equation minus root 5m plus 2 plus root m plus 2 is equal to square root of 5m plus 2 which again is fairly routine to solve. So that's gonna give us two times the square root of five m plus two equals square root of m plus two. Now we can square both sides. That's gonna give us four times five m plus two equals m plus two. So let's see, we have 20 m, we can subtract an m to the other side, so that's gonna give us 19 m over here. Then we have 4 times 2 is 8. We'll subtract that over and get nine, minus 6 on the other side, which tells us that m must be equal to minus 6 over 19. So we found our other value that gives us four real roots in arithmetic progression, and that's a good place to stop.